Okay. So in the top is player one. We have Shu playing Dark Mercia. <laughs> And in the bottom, we have Niki Dragon playing twins. I feel like Dark Mercia is like a bit of a cheeky pick by Shu because um, it feels like he's just not treating this game as seriously because he picked like a um, low tier ish and he's. He's kind of basically saying to Sneaky, I don't need to win this game to win the set, so I will pick a low tier and I'll see what I can do with the low tier. And if I win, that's great, but if I lose, that's also not a big deal. That could be the mentality. Okay, Sneak, this is interesting. Sneaky is going for... He did not heal the commander on the village. Like... Uh, like what we would expect. So instead, he captures the village. And Sneaky actually also... Oh wow! Okay, so that is the obvious punish. Shu captures this village in the bottom left because Sneaky didn't heal his commander, now he has to spend an additional turn healing and then decapping, and that's going to add up to like a lot of lost turns with the commander, basically. Yeah, because like this way you get a little bit more gold early on, but your opponent actually also gets gold because like you're getting like a slight gold lead like earlier, so it does affect your curve, but then you don't get to punish your opponent. Right. And it's like, it's really important because delaying one turn on this village has knock-on effects on all the other villages. Like, because you delayed the commander here, now your commander is going to be one turn later to like everything else as well. So it kind of sets up this, uh, this chain of events. Like, you see Sneaky, see this village that Shu captured uh, on the left is at six, 60% right now. So Sneaky is going to heal, and then the turn after it will be at 70, and then Sneaky is going to decap the one in the bottom left, and they'll be at 80. So that one turn is actually going to make the difference between getting a clean kill with the commander on that village, and like not getting the clean kill. So oh. in order to counter that, Sneaky actually built a knight here, which will help him take these villages more quickly. So, so Shu actually up on e no. yeah Shu gonna be up on economy at the end of his turn, which is good. It's where you want to be. Oh wow, Shu actually just doesn't capture with commander. He just goes straight for goes straight forward. I mean, you can right? Like he could just like knock down villages. Um. Yeah. No, I don't know if I like that because um, if you if he had captured this village, he would also have he would still have like multiple decaps to chain off into on the right side. And like because he didn't capture it, this sword is gonna have to spend some time capturing as well. I guess it doesn't matter too much. That's a minor it's a minor difference. Sneaky though, he's got the classic setup, he's got twins, he can drop fire. And like, right. I guess the second knight's gonna come out? Maybe not this turn, but it's gonna come out at some point. Although Sneaky is going to like, charge his groove by next turn, in fact, that's really fast. And... It's funny that uh, medium chargers are actually very powerful on this map in particular because um, you can usually get two decaps pretty easily in the capture phase, but getting the third one 
is a lot harder. So medium chargers, they get to charge like their groove out of the opening. That's pretty huge. And they'll just have it up for the entire game. All right, second night is up. He's just going to drop fire and I guess put himself uh, well, in a position. Not just yet, but um, he's definitely setting up for it. But and like, how is Shu going to respond to this? Because Shu is not really in position to do anything about it. I think Shu might come to regret um, picking Dark Mercia here because the twins have a very proactive game plan, right? Like they have a game plan that they're going to execute and in order to beat it, you have to disrupt their game plan. But Dark Mercia is not good at disrupting things. She is good if you attack into her and you can use her groove to like wipe out an army. but. She's not that great at, um, say, actively stopping a plan like this. Like she would have to engage preemptively. I mean, she, I which okay. she could, because she's got this balloon, right? She could literally yeah. just walk down and hit the stronghold, and then have a balloon a bunch like the balloon follows up and drops a bunch of units behind her. I think he's a little bit vulnerable if he does it this turn, but... There is zero anti-air on the map right now, so... That's true as well. Oh, oh well, okay, that changed. Not but... true anymore. Well, the mage is going to take a turn to get to the... Yeah, that's true. Oh, well, now a witch comes out. Okay, now a witch comes out is definitely... The balloons will just get countered and zoned out, so... Yeah. So, no Dark Mercy or Rundown free hit for you. Uh, uh, well, you can still do it. Uh, it's just, like, less likely that you can escape afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's I guess, like, you... the one thing you could do is you could balloon a spear to the front line just to threaten uh actually you could balloon oh you couldn't balloon dark mercia down there she would get killed by the knights but uh or maybe actually there's a good spot so for sneaky. her to sit <laughs> so sneaky has managed to restore um economic equality oh and actually she was just going for economy here it's not even caring about the setup that sneaky has to just groove his hq and kill it like this is really scary actually like how do you deal with this because sneaky is gonna get it in like two turns and like there's no game plan that can i don't see how shu is gonna stop this if i'm being honest i think that was a play where you put like dark mercia like you move the balloon down to the bottom left bridge tile you drop the spear above it and dark mercy to the right and then all of a sudden you're like threatening to kill the knights before they can actually get into a good position that's true and actually that's still like kind of possible on the next turn like so what shu could be planning is for um because now he has like this massive econ lead right so he could be planning to just trade off these knights and it's okay if you have to sacrifice a bit to get rid of them because um, once sneaky uses his groove he has to make something happen within like two or three turns and if he doesn't then it's just um it's gone it won't come back so that could be shu's uh game plan here and a bit oh well i was gonna say a big part of it is uh ballooning oh actually there's still the potential for that because now this second balloon is in position to pick up Dark Mercia and put her on the left. So it's still possible. 
So the question is, will Sneaky use his Groove this turn? I feel like it's a good turn to do it. Cause... Yeah, because it stays out for four turns. So... Yeah. Yeah, I think now is the time. And then he throws it down this turn, and he can start hitting villages again. And like, then yeah, building could, up Groove. Like, even build up... He could build up a second Groove. Like, he could have a second Groove before the first one expires, and then he just has, like, just constant... So many turns of pressure, actually. Hmm. But Shu got an Archer, which is... Yeah, okay. So Sneaky got a Groove here. Um, Alright, that is a good spot. I, so, when you're playing Twins, it's really important to choose a good spot for grooving. And the reason why this spot, like two squares from the HQ, is really, really good is, is because it leaves you with just enough space to position knights, like six squares away from the HQ. And they won't like be in range of the fire at any point. So there's just enough space for you to um for you to do that it also means that like let's say the sword tries to recapture this village if it stays where it is it'll burn to death and if it goes it from the left like twins could just walk up and kill it like there isn't a big counter attack threat right now so well, twins are seem very powerful on this map actually just because they have the early rush potential like it's only turn seven and sneaky is setting up lethal in like two turns or three turns okay and she realizing that you know dark, it's time to bring dark mercia to the front that's as much groove What's as he's gonna farm <clears throat> yep so Dark Mercia is at a decent, a decent number. It's at eighty, so it's like, you know, it's 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 an okay number. Eighty-five at the end uh, of this turn, and then if she hits one thing, end. she'll have Groove the turn after. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And ooh, actually, you know what I was saying about like the sword could just steal from the left, and there wouldn't be a good punish. Now there's a good punish. Like Dark Mercy is in play. The rifle could move into a good position to cover as well. There's an archer as well, so yeah, like. She's really just reinforcing this front. But that's the thing about the twins group, right? It doesn't matter how much you reinforce it. At some point you're gonna have to to just get out because of the fire. So Unless, like, Shu makes something happen here. The pressure is now on Shu to demonstrate that he can stop the very obvious game plan that Sneaky has. Which is two knights, six squares, crit, and win. So. So, Shu could actually be planning to, like, just engage on this next turn like just um bring all his forces down below the fire let the fire expand and like fight sneaky in the bottom here i think that's actually what shu is setting up to do oh a spear on les left on the bridge and dies rip so actually that's a pretty big misplay uh oh i like that hex actually and, and like, yeah, this hex is this is great because the mage is not in position to kill the witch. Sneaky playing a very clean game so far. He's uh, there are like no no tactical errors, and he's just doing good work. Yeah, just goes for like recaptures where he can. The Hex, it does so much, like, you know, Dark Mercia can't kill the sword on the right anymore. Uh, the spears are going to hit the twins he's a little still, less he's still hard. definitely can do that. Uh, 90%? Still 
Does the ninety percent commander kill a sword on planes? Yes, pretty sure it does. It'll be ninety-five at the start of his turn. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, it does one. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. I'm being silly. I thought it only did like one fifteen base damage, but it's one twenty. Yeah, one fifteen is like the minimum. Right, yeah. You're correct. Okay, but you know, it was still a good hex, so... Right, yeah, it's, an, it's definitely a great hex. This hex... Um, I want to say it actually got close to its full value. In fact, it actually, I think it actually got its full value. And, like, it's not just the, the unit value that's important, right? It's also the tempo, because... Now these units are going to have less effective attack and defense. So they're going to trade less well. Although I do want to say like these 9 health swords, uh, well that single 9 health sword is actually a great unit to suicide. That's true, but I mean, the conditions for it haven't been met yet, but could happen. I think Sneaky has anticipated Shu's uh, only possible defense very well, and he's just like, um, just preventing it. Like, Shu really wanted to establish a strong formation, like, below the fire. So it could, it could kind of wall out Sneaky from being able to, um, from being able to, how do you say, push the stronghold. But yeah, because like what Shu wants to do is he wants to wedge himself between the fire and Sneaky and push Sneaky back. Right, exactly, yeah. But it's now not possible. Because Sneaky has taken that position first. Uh, <clears throat> and another benefit of putting it like two tiles away from the stronghold is you actually have two turns to uh, do the to do the crits. I mean to do the knight setup. Cause yeah, you have two turns to do it. Uh, was that a rifle hit on the sword on the mountain? Oh, okay, okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's damage. Yeah, it's and damage. you know, the, the two health sword isn't going to be a big threat to Dark Mercia. So. That's true. And even like, now, even if Shu established this strong defensive position on the left, what Sneaky can do now is just swing everything over to the other side, and it'll still be open on that side, like, and Shu will have to go back. Although that might not be the best idea. Because um, then Dark Mercia might be able to wedge herself between the fire and Sneaky's army. Anyway. So it's definitely not straightforward to play this as either player. Because uh, the setup requires execution and the defense also requires execution. So... Definitely, this game will be heavily... Uh, the next two turns are critical. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I mean, there are some interesting plays that can happen here, though. Like, Sneaky could ignore the stronghold now and just swing up to the right and take a bunch of villages. Mm, well, he could do that, but I feel like that's not a... That's not the best way to make use of the fire. But, I mean, he's fairly close to having a second groove, so... You could play a, ma a game where you're just throwing fire on your opponent's stronghold. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. That's one way to do it. Um, I would... I mean, if he... If Sneaky pulls back from the left side here and tries to go for the top right, I mean, Shu will just already be in position to take these um, 
left side villagers that Sneaky is kind of going to be abandoning. Maybe, but you know, he'd, he'd have to go through a rifle. Okay. And Shu doesn't have like anti rifle units, right? Like, at least Sneaky has some dogs and stuff, but Shu just doesn't have any dogs at all. Not a single one. Yeah, he's got a whole and, bunch of spears. One, which he just... <laughs> yeah, he's got spears, he's got sword, he's got an archer, he's got a knight. The knight does pretty well against the rifle if he can get on top of it, but. Like nothing beats up the dog in terms of just raw damage and also gold efficiency. Like actually, the dog does more damage than the knight, which is pretty hilarious when you think about it. Taking his time here, which I think is good. Uh, you do need to plan out this turn and the next turn quite carefully. Because next turn is the turn where you can set up night crits. And the way that Sneaky's doing it, he's going to have to do it from the bottom. Because this one of his knights is not in position to swing around to the top and like still be in crit position. On it the could HP. actually be he puts one up top and one below. Oh well, that's that's possible actually. Um, because like let's think about it. like this bottom knight if it goes where the sword is to the, the top right of it he could put some units in front and then there isn't really enough to clear that or even actually the bridge tile below the koi pond if you put a unit there or if you put your knight there then it can crit from that position and the other knight could crit from right. like a kind of similar position as well. Yeah, it's, it's really tough to say. You want to note that like fire is in just the right position to stop any balloons from blocking because the balloons have six movement and the furthest tall that the fire is going to reach is like six squares away from the balloons so the balloons won't be able to block anything on this next turn i think there's so a fairly things... safe like you just have both your knights like you have one knight maybe like the tile north of the village and the other knight uh south of the coal pond and then you potentially even use your commander to knock that five health village down and you just have the knights run in and crit the stronghold that would be like my personal way of doing it i'd even probably just sack the witch just throw it in hex as much stuff as possible just to that slow would be an interesting play i mean it it would almost be like worth it right because um, sure, it's losing value, but you get so much tempo out of it just from your opponent having weaker units overall. Yep. Um, or, yeah, I mean, actually, you could even just put the witch, like... Uh, well, that's slightly awkward. It's hard to, like, cover the squares where the knight wants to do its crit from. But you could even just... Hmm, I guess you could like build another mage. Would it reach in time? One, two, three. No, the mage here wouldn't reach. I was just thinking like you could throw another mage in there, but. I feel like Shu had the wrong um, high level strategy going into this. Like the twins have. Um, the twins are good at attacking, right? Because they can choose their battlefield but in order to counter the twins you need to attack them first and they're really bad at defending that because their group does nothing to help you defend right so i just feel that uh shu has the exact wrong matchup for this like th this is not the commander i would pick to 
try to fight twins. He really taking his time though. I mean, he potentially wins off the next turn, right? So, like, he's got this bank of so 36 minutes to work with. It's worth it to uh, just make sure it's airtight. Just... Even know what you would be calculating here, though, like, what would be the considerations? So, you would definitely want to... Actually, I think it's kind of easy. No, wait. So, okay, so let me try to guess what Sneaky is thinking right now. So Sneaky is probably thinking he wants to use his two knights to crit from the bottom. So he would have to put his two knights uh, possibly on that bridge tile and like the tile like diagonally one down from it. So if he does that, uh, he needs to make sure that they cannot be hit. Which is actually fairly easy because the only thing that can hit them if they're there is Dark Mercia. So he's trying to figure out how to make it unsafe for Dark Mercia to be standing to hit either one of those knights on the next turn. Yeah. And I guess, like, any if you put a unit in front on the bridge, like, anything that attacks it dies the turn after. Right. That's also true. So... I, I, feel, I feel like this is actually a fairly simple turn for Sneaky. He just needs to uh, not get lethal, and also make sure that his knights can't be hit. Although, that is... I thought I do start to see some of the difficulties, because... Um, like, firstly, you can't block the two knights. You can't block with the with the witch because she would develop the mage to the to a position where you can threaten. Um, you can threaten at the witch, right? If it tried to block at this bridge tower, uh, diagonally, one down and one right from the five HP village beside that Mercia. So that won't work, and honestly, like, um, if you try to block with the twins from that plains tile, like, uh, two squares below the five HP village, then there's a night crit and Dark Messiah lined up and, sh and a rifle, and uh, some sort sacrifices as well. So Sneaky probably doesn't want to have to deal with that. I'm looking at this and I'm just like... Hmm. It's... I feel like if Sneaky was playing someone that wasn't Shu, this turn would have been over by now. Right, yeah. But he yeah, really so doesn't want to lose this game. Right, because if he loses this game, he's out of the finals. So he's just making sure it's airtight, which is reasonable. To be honest, I don't see how Shu can like escape this. Like I just I think if Sneaky does does it correctly, there's no defense. Because Shu doesn't have any dragons or anything that can hit the knights. It's just um it's just pikes. And yeah, pikes. I mean there's a knight crit on anything that tries to like stay in front of the knights, so you just have to be a bit oh, careful. Gonna... The thing is, what are you gonna use to hit the knights? Like, I mean, well, let's say with... let's say he puts his commander in front. There's a lethal on the commander. Right. So, but what I'm trying to say is, um, you don't need to. 
be worried about the commander hitting the knights, right? Because if the commander hits the knights, the commander will die. No, but I mean, his knight could hit the thing in front of... Uh, so, Shu's knight and can hit whatever is in front of Sneaky's knights. Okay, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You don't need to put anything in front of the knights, because um, there's nothing that can hit the knights, except for Dark Mercia. I guess, yeah, she would just die, yeah. And the, Although, the even like, funnier thing, right, is that you don't even need to set up to kill this turn. Because the fire is going to exist for another turn. Yeah, that's that's true as well. Sneaky can if you... Uh, well, that that's true, but I feel like the best opportunity is... Oh, wow. Oh, is Sneaky going for lethal here? Like, I can't imagine... I don't see anything, but I... I mean, if Sneaky sees it then that's it's gotta work right uh i i really can't see it though i guess i oh wait i i kind of see it now um that seven hp sword in the bottom Doesn't is reach. probably going oh but it would hit the spear yeah it hit the spear and then you can hex and then the mage can probably kill it and then you have a knight once you kill that 5 HP village, like with the knight on the other side, on the right the right hand knight, then you would have three sides to kill Dark Mercia. But this... I feel like you don't have to go for this though as Light Sneaky because you already have the winning game plan. But if it works, then props to him. He's gonna go for it, yeah. I mean... He's gonna go for it, yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, you use the I mage, guess, not the commander. I guess this was what Sneaky was calculating for several turns. Yeah, for I mean, that, was, that was a good 12, 13 minute break that Sneaky used <laughs> to calculate one lethal. Oh, it looks very guaranteed though. You even have like this 2 HP sword that can suicide, and you can heal it up before you suicide it. Yeah, uh, it, it looks very guaranteed. Yeah, one mage can absolutely kill that spear that's guaranteed i think on the spear uh and and you can go no. oh and you can hex you gets the roll he needs but... uh so yeah you've got i guess you hit with like sword so i get yeah you may heal the sword and suicide that as well because why not uh knight takes out the village hex comes down you could even hex before the sword's suicide goes in. Like, that's the potential extra percent of damage you would need. Alright. Hex comes down. Heal the sword before it suicides. And then, doesn't like, do that. dog. Alright, he doesn't go for that, but... It doesn't really matter at this yeah, point. That's a very yeah, dead dark horse, yeah. That's, that's very guaranteed. Yeah, 30... 29%. Yep, and Twins finish it off. Oh. Nice. What a return. Uh, neither of us really were looking for that. And I don't think Shu really was either. And Sneaky, True. playing to the format, uses the chest timer to just calculate a lethal. And... The odds were that good. Was like... If, yeah, if he gets the was, coin flip yeah. on the, the sword suicide, then... That was a really good... That was really good awareness by Sneaky. Although, I have to say, like... Oh, never mind. If it didn't work, then Dark Mercia still wouldn't have had groove, so it would have been fine. Like, it doesn't change anything about the resolving position. Uh, I'm getting messages from Sneaky. <laughs> so, message from Sneaky. Spent a good 20 minutes calculating Stronghold Rush. He didn't. He didn't spend that long. Then I realized DM could possibly stop it. Then I later realized I could just kill DM. Okay. 
I mean, it happens. But, yeah. That was very, very guaranteed after... After the first sword. Honestly, like everything right. else, like it wasn't even rolls. It was just like everything yeah. could have low rolled and it would have killed. I think the slight yeah. optimization of healing the sword first would have given a couple more percent and that would have helped, but. Like it would have been a difference of maybe three or four percent. So even more uh, overkill. Yep. And then in that situation, if he low rolls on every unit, it works. Right. But well played to Sneaky, taking it to game three. We're going to see if they play tonight or tomorrow.